Here it is, another one of the Uliphone Note series, this time the 12P, which is a model which has a huge battery inside it. We will go into that in a little bit more detail once we've got it unboxed. First things first, we'll have a look around the box and then get it unboxed. So on the back, here we go, 7,700 milliamp hour battery, a huge 6.82 inch HD display, octa-core processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, 30 megapixel, 2 megapixel and another 2 megapixel triple camera on the rear of the phone and then we've got an 8 megapixel front camera, we've got face unlock and fingerprint ID and it's powered by Android 11. So let's just get into the box and take a look. It's the first unboxing video where I've completely unboxed it, cellophane and all. Open that up and we have the phone. Wow, that's big. <laughs> that's really, really big. So again, the same information that was on the box is on the removable screen protector. We'll have a look at the phone in more detail in just a moment. It's a nice blue colour though. I do like that see what else we've got in the box. We've got the SIM tool which we will need. This phone does have dual SIM and SD card so three parts to the SIM tray but we will look at that as well in a bit more detail. We've got a what would you call it a condom case I think. Uh, yeah. So these now seem to come as standard with uh, a lot of a lot of devices. It does save you a bit of money from uh, buying a SK separately. And then we've got the usual array of Uliphone documents. We've got instructions of phone charging, the warranty card, safety prompt card, and a quick guide. We're not going to go through those. We know how to use an Android phone these days. And we have a charging cable, USB-C, pretty much standard now. Very rare you get anything else on these devices. And then we've got a charger, UK plug, because I'm in the UK. I'll just try and work out how powerful it is. So it's a 10 watt. That's not bad. You don't normally get a 10 watt with, uh, with cheap phones. But we have this time. And that is that. So we'll take a look around the device. Gonna have to cover up the IMEI number um, while I am showing you this. So we've got the three cameras here and a flash, and we've got instructions here for so the SIM tray is here, volume up and volume down, and the power key, very much standard as you would expect. The colour seems to uh, seems to go from light blue at the top and a much darker blue at the bottom is quite nice is that then on the sides on the top we have a headphone jack hooray it's kind of got a flat top which is not necessarily a bad thing quite like those so sim tray as expected and then we've got USB C charging port there microphone speaker looks like there was no speaker on the other side so it's not stereo it's just mono now on this side we've got the volume rocker and the power button get it fired up and do some testing. Just going to open up the SIM tray. Usual drill there, just pop the pin in and then there we go. So as previously alluded to, it's dual SIM and SD card. SD card you can go up to 128 gigabytes which is plenty of storage. Uh, that with the 64 built in you're going to have quite a lot to go at. Just going to have a look at some gaming on the device. Uh, this is Call of Duty Mobile, of course, and we're on low settings. Uh, I don't think he's going to work with settings any higher than this, but this is a nice, smooth experience. It's definitely playable. And here we've got Asphalt 8 Airborne with the music switched off. Uh, we're running this at medium settings, so we'll see how this runs. Seems fairly good. I mean, it's a very old game now, this. But it still graphically looks pretty stunning, to be honest.
yeah as you can see this runs perfectly acceptably with medium settings I would have shown you Asphalt 9 but I'm not that keen on that game to be honest I prefer 8 and we'll just take a look at some PSP emulation see if this device runs Alright, so things are going well till I crashed and then it glitched quite drastically to be honest. There is settings you can adjust on the PPSSPP emulator. Other than the glitch when it shifted to the cutscene on this game, it, it seems to be working fairly well. Graphically it looks, it looks sound and it's very smooth the gameplay. Uh, it's just a shame that there is the odd issue there. Quite a capable device really for the price. So let's just have a look at some of the camera options that are available on here. So we've got a panorama mode, we've got portrait, so just with this one I'll just flash up some uh, some selfies up on the screen so you can see what this does. But it's one of the, the portrait modes where you can uh, you can blur the, the background so that the focus is on you. So there's some settings within here so we change the save location, we can add the logo watermark, we can change the picture size. So on the back camera we've got 2 megapixels for some reason, um, just using that, that mode. But when we do it on the forward facing camera it'll be a bit different. We've got a pro mode, so we've got control over white balance, autofocus, that sort of thing. Um, so pretty, pretty impressive stuff. Um, not unusual even on phones at this this price point now though capture is just to take a a photo and you've got shortcuts here to HDR and also some uh, some additional sort of filters I think there you can uh, smooth bright and enlarge slim obviously on the on the selfie cam on the front only video wise so we've got no image stabilization unfortunately You've got uh, the option to detect faces, never seen that on uh, video, but yeah, maybe that's going to improve the, uh, the focus. On the back facing cameras, you can go up to HD 1080p, which is 30 frames per second. On the front facing camera, you can only go to 720p, and I will show you some footage from both of those in just a moment. You've got slow motion on the back camera, and then if you press more, these are the options that you're presented with. I will show you some macro shots. So there's two 2 megapixel cameras on the front. One is for depth and the other one is for macro. As you can see, reasonable performance from a phone at this price. But uh, there is better out there. If you wanted to use the front facing camera, this is the sound quality and image quality that you come to expect. I can tell just by looking at the preview on the screen that this is pretty rubbish. It's 720p but a pretty pretty fuzzy, unclear image. Not very impressed. Rear facing camera, 1080p, sound quality, same as the, uh, the front facing camera. Pretty rubbish to be honest, it does pick up audio but it sounds dreadful. Uh, image quality, not amazing but acceptable I would say. Just talk you through some of the specs in a bit more detail. The device itself has a Unisoc SC9863A processor within there, and it's a 28 nanometer process that has uh, produced the processor in here. So massive battery, but that's going to be drained really quickly with the very power hungry processor that's in there. And by power hungry, I don't mean in terms of performance. I just mean literally. It's going to need a lot of power to get stuff going through there. Display wise, we have 1640 pixels uh, by 720. So, really, it is a 720p display. It looks okay. Get some fairly vibrant colours out of it if you uh, choose a vibrant background like I have done. I have found that the fingerprint unlock doesn't always work. And sometimes it takes a, a few touches before it will do so. In terms of the case that comes with it, it attracts loads of fingerprints. But when you take the case off, the nicely shiny back of the phone does also attract a lot of fingerprints, as does the display. Can't really see it, but there you go. Kind of bit there. 
So that's pretty much for the uh, the walkthrough and the testing that we'll do with the phone. So I've got some thoughts. It's a nice big screen, but the resolution's a bit too low. It runs some games, but it doesn't run them all perfectly well, and it only really runs them at a lower setting. The phone is very much sold on the fact that it's got a huge battery, but that huge battery has an old, slow, power-hungry processor within it, and not a right lot else that's spec'd very high. The cameras perform poor, it's only got mono sound, the microphone picks up sound appallingly. The phone is a fingerprint magnet, which is disappointing. However, if you are wanting a very basic phone, which you want to be able to have access to all of the Play Store straight out of the box, and you also want regular updates, which now Unifone do seem to be a bit better at this, but you can also get the Google Play Store security updates on this device, then potentially it's, it's a good price. However, I do keep seeing the Redmi Xiaomi phones at a lower price than this, and they usually have slightly better specs, a bit more support, and they also tend to hold their value a little bit better. Phones like this one, uh, you tend to find that once you've had it for about five minutes, uh, it's dropped in value drastically because there's a, another model out there or another manufacturer has brought out something at the same price point that is a lot better spec'd. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.